The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. This is revealed. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias Houston. It is your time, March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's going to be a night of the prophetic deliverance, healing, and it's going to be a restoration season for you. Make sure you mark it down. Make sure you're there March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. God bless you. It is your time. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias Houston. It is your time, March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's going to be a night of the prophetic deliverance, healing, and it's going to be a restoration season for you. Make sure you mark it down. Make sure you're there March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. God bless you. Houston, it is your time. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias Houston. It is your time, March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's going to be a night of the prophetic deliverance, healing, and it's going to be a restoration season for you. Make sure you mark it down. Make sure you're there March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. God bless you. Houston, it is your time. Amen. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias Houston. It is your time, March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's going to be a night of the prophetic deliverance, healing, and it's going to be a restoration season for you. Make sure you mark it down. Make sure you're there March 31st at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. God bless you. All right, all right, all right. We are live, and may God bless you wherever you are. It's a, it's, a, it's a privilege to be with you all right now, and I believe that um, in this uh, amazing hour, uh, the Lord Jesus will truly glorify himself, and we are going to see uh, the hand of God, and we are going to mature dramatically and profoundly in the truths of God. So I want you to let somebody know that we are live. I tried to come on earlier today uh, to try and help us to get going earlier for the East Coast uh, people. Um, and, I'm, and I'm hoping to do this more often where I could come even earlier um, for people overseas also can, um, so that they can be present. But today's subject is going to be extremely profound and um, it may be deleted depending on how crazy I go. So I'm trying to make sure that I stay balanced so that um, uh, more of you can rewatch it. Those who come later can have an opportunity to see it. Um, but it's going to be transformative because every word that comes from God will transform us. Every word that comes from God will lift us. Every word that comes from God um, will draw us close to him. Uh, words from God fortify us. So when we receive God's word that is genuinely from God, you see, I can read the Bible to you and it may not carry power based on my genuineness and if God is truly speaking. You see, the word of God should be in season. So if I read the word of God, Uh, let me explain it this way because I, let me, so that you can really understand it. 
the scriptures you read, they're in the past. But the spiritual essence or the, the presence or the power of the scriptures are ever present because God is eternal, right? So if I read to you scripture in the flesh, it does not produce the results desired unless I have the grace and I have entered into what God wanted to pass on that is beyond ages and beyond time. So even though what I am saying may be connected to something that is in the past, but because God is omnipresent, omnipotent, the presence and the power of what God intended continues doesn't stop. Did, did that make sense? So many times if you just sit and you just read the word of God, that's why people can have the Bible and still be dry, have nothing in them. That when you hear them speak, they're empty. There is no presence of God. There is no virtue. There is no grace. There is no power. There is no conviction of the Holy Spirit that even convicts you of sin. They will use intellectual means. That's why Paul says, I, do not, I did not come to you in excellence of speech. Because excellence of speech does not mean you have the power of God. That's why when people talk about, oh, uh, he didn't even read that scripture right, or he didn't even uh, explain that scripture right. Okay, but was the intention behind that word from God or not? Because God is not caught up with your theology. God is caught up is, can my spirit be communicated to a person? So when people are fighting these small details, God will be saving and changing people. This is why we need a closer relationship with God. Is it good to be theologically sound? Yes. But does theology cast out demons? No. Does theology bring salvation? No. It is the grace of God that brings faith that we may be saved. So I want you to be prepared because this is going to be extremely profound. I want you to push the like button. We are already at 3,000 people over actually. Let's hit that um, thumbs up so that more people can see this video later. I always encourage that so that the word of God can spread because there are a lot of people who uh, may not see the video, but when we like it, then the algorithm kind of sees it like, all right, people are really into this. Let's share it more so that more people can come to Christ. You see, whenever people are trying to taint us, we have to show the world that what we have is of value and people will see it. And people will be changed because we are about Jesus. We are not here because of people. We are here because Jesus wants souls to come to him. God wants people to make it to heaven. That is the main goal. So if you're ready, I want you to type number one and make sure that you hit the thumbs up. You see there's that like button. There's one thumb down and thumbs up. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Let's hit as many thumbs up uh, as we can. Uh, so that Jesus can be glorified. Amen. Yeah, heat it up and, and, and chop that thing as much as possible. Pop, 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 pop. I told you about the shot that I wanted. You guys are not doing what I told you. Yeah, so let's keep hitting that thing as much as we can. As much as we can. If you are ready, okay, I think people are ready now. I think we are ready. Boom. Now, hear me by the Spirit of God. Let's go into this. I'm going to try to be, behave so that we don't go too deep where it's messed up. And when I mean messed up is where people can't digest and then they start demonizing us. Because of how profound we can go. Amen. And the reality is we are not all deep. So some people, it may make them crash, question themselves, and then it becomes what we were not saying. So we want to remain in the place whereby... It is digestible so that God himself by his spirit can reveal this to you. Now, I'm going to speak to you about spiritual warfare. Now, I'm going to speak to you about spiritual warfare. The Bible says, for our weapons of warfare are not carnal. But I want you to notice something, our weapons, plural. It doesn't say our weapon. It says our weapons. What does that mean? For every device the enemy will send on you, there is a spiritual response that you have. So every weapon is designed for a particular issue. Now the issue we find in church and especially people who love uh, to, to serve God is that we are so limited in our spiritual arsenal. We don't know the weapons, we just know our weapon. We'll say in the name of Jesus, which is 
the, the code name to activate anything that is in God. So when you call upon the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is powerful. The name of Jesus is strong. But you need to ask yourself, why is it that every time I call on the name of Jesus, I don't always get the desired results? It means I may have called the right name, but I used the wrong weapon. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Because prayer is a formula. The name of Jesus gives us approval from the Father that whatever we ask will be done. Jesus said, ask my Father of anything in my name and I will do it for you. So we ask in his name, but his name is what allows us to get a what we want from the Father. But if we don't know what we want, even though we use his name, it does not guarantee that we will get what we want. Just because I mentioned Jesus doesn't mean I get what I want. This is why uh, uh, James, the brother of the Lord Jesus, says it like this. Why is there envy amongst you? Why is there jealousy amongst you? Why is it that you guys are not getting what you want? And I'm paraphrasing here. And he went on to say, it is because when you ask, you ask amiss. Wait. So I can pray the wrong way. Just because I said in Jesus' name doesn't mean I prayed correctly. Hello. <laughs> so you can pray amiss. Mm -hmm. That's why I always laugh at people and they say, yeah, yeah, he, that person didn't mention Jesus. That person didn't mention Jesus. How, uh, uh, they don't even know the word in the name of Jesus. The word anoma means in the manner that Jesus would do it. It's not even in the chanting on the calling of the name by itself. There is a character in the nature of Christ that ought to be with you, that you don't just call the name of Jesus, but you manifest the name of Jesus. Two different dimensions. Peter had reached a level where his shadow could heal because he didn't even need to mention it. Every part of his being was calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. So it's a level and a dimension. So there's a place you get to that you even say, at my word, this shall be. More than the Christian will not understand why you said that. They'll say, well, he didn't say in the name of Jesus, it's pride. Well, then everyone in the Old Testament must be prideful. And some people also in the New Testament. But this is because believers are spiritually dull and it is a shame because we are the ones that walk with God who created and ordained the ways of the Spirit. No demon, no witchcraft ordained these operations of the spiritual world. God did. All the devil has done is he has taken advantage of the paths that God had established in order to make certain things work for them. Sacrifices were not ordained by demons. It was ordained by God. Invoking the name of God or invoking the presence of God was ordained by God. But even spirits, evil spirits cannot come to a place unless they are invoked. Same thing, but one was for God, but demons also found that this can transmit me from one corner to another corner. I can be summoned. Because that's the way of the spirit. Are you, are you here or you're... Okay, maybe I'm starting to mess up. So, so I, I, the, the, the Bible says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of the light. That should bother you. That God is saying, how can devil worshippers, satanists, know more about spiritual things than you? Knowing about prayer without knowing the ways of the Spirit, you're still not praying. Because prayer is spiritual. So if prayer is spiritual and you don't know about spiritual things, are you really praying? <laughs> God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if you don't know spiritual things, you don't even know truth. Notice he did not say facts, truth. 
meaning God's reality. So we get results that are bipolar. One minute it works, many times it doesn't work. <laughs> Sometimes we get it, many times we don't get it. It's like up and down, down and up, up and down. It's like somebody break dancing or there's no consistency. The reason why there is no consistency is because the ways of the Spirit are not known. You see, some people get confused about prophecy because they're like, uh, you only prophesy when God speaks. Well, yes, but when did God stop speaking? God always has something to say concerning every situation. You just don't know how to hear him. You don't know how to receive from him. So when people can do it at will, you assume <laughs> that they are doing something else just because of your, 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 your uh, what is the word I'm, I'm looking for? Just because of your, your, uh, your inability to comprehend spiritual things. I don't need to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit to prophesy. Amen. Because feelings are for baby Christians, by the way. Yeah. I have faith to activate to hear God. I remember I was talking to... Um, uh, I don't know who I was talking to. I don't know if it was um, some sons or some daughters. I can't remember. And they were asking me, Pops, you... you prophesied to two sisters and you described what was happening with their mother in detail and you said the angel of the Lord is not telling me this I am using my office as a prophet I'm using my own spirit my inner man to hear from God to know this they are like but it was it was the same we couldn't tell the difference I said you could not tell the difference because you don't know how this thing works but anyone that has observed me for a long time, you know when the angel of the Lord is ministering to me. You know when the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And you know as a prophet when I search it out. But if you're not sharp and you don't understand spiritual things, you will not get it. You think it's the same thing. Yet it's not. Completely different. The ministrations is just, I have matured so much in my spiritual vocabulary that when I minister, you can't tell the difference. But the way the information was acquired was completely different, not the same. Because as a child of God, you can search out a matter before God. You can pray, Lord, hey, these guys are crying. What's really going on? You push yourself before God and he will tell you. No one knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit that is in man. Or the spirit of the man. In the same way, nobody thought, knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So if I have the spirit of God and God knows everyone, God created everyone... I can search out his thoughts to know a matter concerning something because all are his people. <laughs> so if I know how to search him out, to search out his mind because we have the mind of Christ, I will know about anything I want to know because they are all his people. What? God knows everything. <laughs> Do you understand? So it is understanding spiritual protocols that allow you to know these things. Now when it comes to spiritual or warfare, there are many realms that we fight in. We fight in the realm of the flesh. We fight in the realm of the soul. And we fight in the realm of the spirit. We fight in the realm of the flesh. Meaning, let me not say flesh, because flesh usually is interchangeable with the soul. We fight in the realm of the body, the physical body. We fight in the realm of the soul. And we fight in the realm of the spirit. Somebody will say, well, can you prove that? prove that? The Bible says, bringing down every stronghold, right? Where are the stronghold? It says in your mind. And what is the mind? The mind is the soul. Our weapon of warfare are mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. 
So if you're dealing with a stronghold, you're not dealing with it in the realm of the spirit. You're dealing with it in the soul realm. Because your soul exists in a certain realm, what some New Ages call the astral plane. Because your soul exists in a world. That world is not the spiritual world per se, but it is, but it's not. It's a reflection of the spiritual realm. Because your spirit can go in between the spiritual realm and the soulish intermediate realm. Because it's the guy who stands between the physical and the spiritual completely, in between. But that realm, it is actually a realm. Because right now you exist in three different places at the same time. So if the devil can build up a stronghold in your mind, it means there is a world there. When people suffer like mental illness or depression, oppression, those kinds of things, they are battles in the soul realm. But you can solve battles of the soul even from the physical realm. Hey, come out. Oh, live, come out. By touching you, I can interfere with the soul realm and deliver you because demons don't indwell your spirit. They indwell your body to control your soul. Your spirit man is the holies of holies. That's where God himself dwells. And God indwells your spirit in order to influence your soul. <coughs> Is this making sense so far? So demons want your body to control your soul. God wants your spirit to control your soul. So there's the battle in the physical realm. There's the battle of the soul. And then there's the battle in the spirit. But the weapon that we use to overcome all these things, they are spiritual. They are not physical, but they are spiritual. Now, what does that mean, they are spiritual? Let me ask you a question. Was the staff of Moses physical or spiritual? It was physical, but it was spiritual. <laughs> it was both. It could function in the spiritual realm and it could function in the physical realm. So when it says our weapons of warfare, it means that you can take something that is physical and turn it into something that can be used spiritually. Anointing oil is olive oil. <laughs> in the hands of God, you just see oil in the physical. But in the spiritual, it's another thing. I'm talking... In I'm trying to get you somewhere. You're communicating, sir. If you can hear me, just type one, type one, type one, type one. We're going somewhere. Trust me, we haven't even gotten to the weapon that God wants us actually to use. Amen. Keep typing that one and keep hitting that thumbs up. Let's get more uh, likes on the video. Let's get more likes on the video. We're going to go in scripture in a second, and I'm going to hit you with a few scriptures, and it will open your eyes wide. Amen. You yourself, you'll be shocked. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's keep going. Now watch this. So there are physical things that can be used for spiritual means. Your sacrifice is physical, but it, it does something in the spiritual realm. Right? Yes. Water is physical, but when you get baptized for spiritual means, it becomes something else.
Are you guys still here? Mm. I feel like I'm messing up. Let me keep quiet. Now, when Daniel was in Babylon, he was fasting and praying to understand the time of deliverance for the children of Israel, right? He was seriously praying and fasting. God gave him a vision, but he didn't understand it. He was praying to understand, but he did not know there was something he needed to initiate spiritually so that the people can be free. His duty was not just to know when God was going to release people, but his duty was to participate in the liberation of the children of Israel out of Babylon. Now, the, the man of God prayed. But there was the prince of the power of the air that withstood that what was to come from heaven for him not to come through. That Gabriel was resisted To penetrate into the atmosphere where Daniel was. Until Michael stepped in. But Michael stepped in by reason of God's grace. Not because Daniel prayed. So God helped him. Because God wanted Daniel to really get this. But we as children of God, after reading that passage... We ought to be awakened. We ought to be revived. We ought to be wiser to understand that God may be sending me something. But if I don't know how to fight in the realm of the spirit, my miracle may be delayed. My destiny may be delayed. I may be stagnant because I am fighting in the soul realm. Instead of fighting in the spiritual realm. Yeah. And if I do want to fight in the spiritual realm, am I using the right means to fight fallen angels wow. that is different from fighting devils? Wow. <laughs> There's a big difference, I won't cover this today, between unclean spirit, evil spirit, devils, and demons. All these guys are different. Different. The thing is, you know, you've just been taught fallen angels and whatever. And I understand there's nothing wrong with that, but trust me, it's way more complex than you think. But there are certain things that have been generalized so that you can get an idea of what is happening. And when you get close to God, your eyes are open to know more. Just for your information, the world has more spirits than men. Wow. Yes. Wow. And there's a lot of spirits that are on our side. And there are a lot of spirits that are not on our side. But the ones that are from God are way more than those who are against us. <coughs> there are angels and then we have what is called angelic spirits. I won't cover that today. Angelic meaning that they are in the service of God. Even though they are not heavenly creatures, nevertheless they are still spirits. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus was arrested and they were taking him to crucify him. And Jesus said a very interesting statement. He said, don't you know, I can ask my father for 12 legion of angels. But what angels was he asking for? 
He said, I can ask. He didn't ask. He said, but I can ask. Jesus understood certain kind of liberation cannot be done simply by prayer. You need to work with angelic or angels to get results. So he did not just say, I will pray and I will disappear. He said, don't you know I can ask for 12 legion to come and get me out of this mess? Why? Because angels are ministering spirits. Not only are they ministering spirits, they are at our service waiting for us to understand how to engage with them in Christ Jesus for us to be able to get what we want. And when I mean what we want, I'm not talking about selfish desires. As a child of God, you always pursue God's will and purpose. But we also have our personal desires, and God promises that he will give it to us. As long as they are pure, as long as they are honorable, as long as they are honest before God, and they are for the good not only of you but of God's people, God has no reason. He would not withhold any good thing from his people. Are you listening to me? So the Lord Jesus makes that statement. But many of you have never thought of that. Elijah was about to be arrested. An angel killed people. Until one came respectfully, then they were spared. And what does the Bible say? That anyone that came to Elijah, they were burnt. Ah, barbecue. Straight up. Cremated. Why were these guys so defended? What did they know that you as a child of God don't know? The Lord Jesus saying, don't you know I can ask my father for angels? It means that many of you, when did you ever ask God to send an angel in a situation? It means you are not utilizing all the weapons of warfare that has been given to you. You don't. Because you have been taught, no, angels only do what God wants. Of course they do. But Jesus is saying, I can ask. Elisha sees his servant panicking, saying we are surrounded. He did not say, God, show him your presence. He did not say, God, show him your power. He said, Father, open his eyes to see who is with us. So when you ask God to protect you, does God leave heaven to come and protect you? Or does he send certain individuals to come and protect you? If you ask God to heal you, does God leave heaven or does he send somebody? <laughs> I don't know if some of you remember um, healed. A certain healed we did. And God told me that people should just walk. It would be like the pool of Belteza. Do you remember that? Uh, well, you, you can ask Lee. And I prayed at home. The Lord told me, when you go to church today, when people are ready to walk in, my angel will go there. Raphael will be there. And when the waters get stirred, tell people to get in. Uh, Uncle Lee is out there. He will tell you. He was the one that was there. Apostle was there. You were there too, JT, right? Your JT was there too. Were you in the... In the yeah. Eileen was there. And I began... Huh? Oh, Uncle Jer Jeremy was there too. Yeah, you were taking video. I, I started praying, oh Lord, what you spoke to me. Lord Jesus, do it. Lord Jesus, do it. What happened? The water began to spin. Everybody was shocked. Even, did you see how many people are delivered? Yeah. Ah! 
I prayed for nine hours for people, remember, nine straight hours. The apostles were looking at me wondering like, what, what is going on? Where did he get this nine hours straight? Yes. Before that, we were at the house and you were in the prayer room for like two and a half hours before that. Yes. Yeah, I was praying at home before I came. Ah, it was a dangerous night. Ah, we saw the move of God like we have never seen. But I want to give you a key and open your eyes to something. Amen. Can, can somebody read uh, um, uh, um, Psalm 35 before I show you what I really want to show you? Psalm 35. Amen. Psalm 35 from verse Amen. 1. Mm -hmm. Plead my cause, O Lord. With them that strive with me. Mm -hmm. Fight against them that fight against me. Mm -hmm. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Mm -hmm. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Mm -hmm. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Mm -hmm. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Mm -hmm. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Mm -hmm. Let them be as a chaff before the wind. Mm -hmm. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Hey, he's, he's telling God what should happen. You just say, I chase demon. <laughs> fire, fire. <laughs> the psalmist is saying, Father, stand up for me. Fight for me. But also, let them be like chaff. Can you tell your angel to chase them? Eh? The prayer went left. He did not say if it is your will, if you feel like it. He said no. <laughs> Let your angel chase them. Yeah. Not only chase them, keep reading, listen to this. <laughs> Verse 6. Uh -huh. Let their way be dark and slippery. Uh -huh. And let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Hey, not just chase them, but let them be in darkness. And let your angel persecute them. Meaning no rest for these ninjas. Keep going, look at this. Verse 7. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit. Because they have looked for me and wanting to kill me for no reason. Uh -huh. Keep going. Which without cause they have digged for my soul. Uh -huh. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Notice that. I want you to mark there. Let destruction come upon him unawares. Can you mark destruction there? Mm -hmm. Make sure if you have a Bible, this is why I like physical Bible. I want you to mark. I'm going to show you something that will shock you. Keep going. And let his net that he have hid catch himself. Let the net they prepared for me catch themselves. Into that very destruction let him fall. Into that very destruction let them fall. So we have two destructions here. Keep going. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. And my joy shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, mm -hmm. Lord, who is like unto thee? Mm -hmm. which delivers the poor from him that is too strong from him. Mm -hmm. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. Mm -hmm. False witnesses did rise up. Mm -hmm. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Mm -hmm. They rewarded me evil for good mm -hmm. to the spoiling of my soul. Mm -hmm. But as for me, mm -hmm. when they were sick, mm -hmm. my clothing was sackcloth. Mm -hmm. I humbled my soul with fasting mm -hmm. and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. Mm -hmm. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. Mm -hmm. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Mm -hmm. But in my advers adversity, they rejoiced mm -hmm. and gathered themselves together. Yes. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and seize not mm -hmm. with hypocritical mockers and feasts. Notice. He's dealing with human beings, but he's not dealing with them in the physical realm, in the spiritual. He's dealing with them with the highest level of weapon that you can. So who is this angel of the Lord that the Bible is talking about? Yeah. I, want, I want to give you a key. Amen. To show you some guys that work under Michael that God uses seriously. Ah, if this guy show up. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But you see, I'm, I showed you Psalm 35 and I can show you many others. I showed you this so that you know there's nothing wrong in your prayer. To say, Father, let this guy go ahead of me. So that if I teach you this, they don't say, look at him still talking about angels. No, you, it's all over your Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes God sends them to intervene on our behalf, but there are times that we can demand. Yeah. The, are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister to them that will inherit salvation? They are sent to serve you, to help you. Having them is a weapon. It definitely is. Look how, look how God uses me prophetically. What, do you think it's just by chance? No, there are angels of God that walk with me. I don't only perceive or hear God by my spirit or by the Holy Spirit, but I have angels that come to me and they help me to minister. This is why when I prophesy prophetically, not only am I extremely accurate, but also, there is a fear and an awe of God that comes upon people. Amen. If somebody needs deliverance, it's two seconds. Yeah. If somebody needs direction, it's two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear from God. I can know how to deal with something extremely quickly yeah. because I am utilizing everything that God made available. You are simply using what is endowed with you by the Holy Spirit. But God has made things available to you beyond what is inside of you. That's good, that's good, that's good. God has made great, great tools available to you beyond even you. Wow, 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 wow. Genesis chapter 3, I believe, verse 20. Amen. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins mm -hmm. and clothe them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Notice this. I want you to read. Pay attention to what God is saying here. Amen. Behold, man has become like one of us. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. To know good and evil. And now, lest he be put forth his hand and take also of the, of the tree of life and mm -hmm. eat and live forever. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Mm -hmm. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of, of Eden cherubims mm -hmm. and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Stop right there. I want you to read again. He placed a cherubim. At every entrance, uh -huh. read that again. Mm -hmm. So he drove, so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword. Notice, which turned. he placed cherubims mm -hmm. with a sword or and a flaming sword. That's deep. I and. want you to read it again. <clears throat> uh huh. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims. And a, fam a flaming sword, which turned every way. Notice, you just read cherubim, but you don't know, and a flaming sword is also a being. Ooh! Yeah, come on. Oh. Wow. He said he placed cherubims at the entrances. Why did he place cherubims at the entrances? Because cherubim's duty is to carry or to, 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 they are carriers of the presence of God. That's why they are called, the, the Bible says, Oh, you fallen cherub that covereth. You see, if you look at the Ark of the Covenant, they cover. You see when they put their wings together. Yeah. It is the presence of God that they are covering because they are custodians of the presence of God. Wow. That is why where two cherubim's eyes called the mercy seat of God because that's where you find God. Every time God wanted to speak to Moses, he would tell Moses, Moses, come, I will speak to you from the midst of the cherubims. Wow. Whenever you're talking of the presence of God, you will also notice that cherubims are always involved. If you look at the temple of God, cherubims are the only angels that are put in there. 
if you look at Solomon's temple or, or in Solomon, Solomon's palace, they, they are not putting archangels, seraphims, only cherubims because cherubims are always associated with what? The presence of God. The Bible even says, glory to God who is enthroned between the cherubims because where cherubims are, the presence of God is. Ooh. So why did God put cherubims at the entrances of the garden? Yeah. So that they can hide the presence, so that Ooh. nobody finds the garden. Oh. But not only did he want to hide his presence, he wanted to make sure, because if you discover it, you still have access. Because cherubims are not fighters. They are powerful but they are not angels that combat by nature. That is why the devil is not called a mighty warrior. He's called a deceiver and a liar. That's why he says he walks around like a roaring lion. It does not say he walks around and he is a lion seeking who he will devour. He is pretending to be what he is not. What maintains him above all the other ones that fell with him is because he's ranked higher than them. So God to make sure just in case these guys find the cherubims and they find me, they will go and find the tree of life and they will eat of this tree. I need to place the flaming sword moving left and right. If anybody finds it, they will die on the spot. Is this making sense? Yes. These guys work under Michael. And these guys are extremely, they don't play around at all. Another name for them in scripture is destroyer. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. Another word for them is destroyer. Another word for them is what? Destroyer. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 23. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door Mm -hmm. It will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. Wow. 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 This guy's duty is to smite. They don't Ooh, they don't heal goodness. you. <laughs> oh <laughs> when they goodness. show up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there will be not only spiritual casualties, physical casualties. Oh because these guys they come to reap, they are like God's judgment. When they show up, they are there to serve you what you deserve. So he's saying, God is saying, I will pass through Egypt tonight. <laughs> when I do come, make sure you have blood because if the destroyer sees you have no blood, he will smite you. Not he will see you are Christians and pass over. They don't care. You don't abide by what was said. You are the enemy. Oh my goodness. Oh my so God. when this guy <laughs> in Psalms is praying, let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Let the angel of the Lord smite them. Let the angel of the Lord, which angel of the Lord? He knows who he's asking for, but it's hidden for you. I will show you 
in scripture a hundred percent that your spiritual warfare should never lack prayer offered to God that these guys should be sent. Ah. Let me show you something. <laughs> First Corinthians ten ten. Uh, actually, before that, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't don't read that. Go to Second Kings verse 19 and start from verse 30. 2 Kings 19 and from verse 14? V verse 30. Oh, verse 30. Yes. Okay. 2 Kings 19 verse 30. Who said 30? 18. Mm. 2 Kings chapter 19 yes. from verse 30. Yes. Amen. I did. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with the shield, nor cast a bank against it. Mm -hmm. By the way that he came, by the same shall be returned. And shall not come into this city, saith the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and mm -hmm. for my servant David's sake. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred, fourscore, and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. A hundred and eighty-five thousand people are killed by one destroyer. Jesus. In one night. Jesus. <laughs> Just one. Ooh, not 10, not 50. Jesus said, I will ask for 12 legions. Ooh. Every legion. <laughs> Every legion has uh, two to 3,000 soldiers. Hold on. Let me show you how dangerous these guys are. <laughs> Whenever somebody is stubborn against God, Acts 12:23. Acts 12:23. Acts chapter 12 and 23. Mhm. Mm and it reads, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Who killed him? <laughs> Just because he did not give glory to God, you have spared you too much now. Nah. The, the angel of the Lord came and killed him. When destroyers, they are sent. Uh, that's why when people say, oh, judgment is coming, trust me, if you're in that city, you will be a casualty too. Ooh, Pray for God's mercy. I don't know why people like this judgment stuff. Yes. Two guys went into Sodom and Gomorrah. Destroyed the whole city. Say so we have come to destroy this city. They didn't say we have come to pray for mercy. They didn't say we have come. If anything, Abraham was asking God so that God can have mercy. These guys were ready to even kill Lot in that city. They didn't care that he was a Christian. It is Lot what he did that made them have mercy on him. 
Because according to Abraham's prayer, even Lot was not going to be spared. It is Lot's spiritual discernment that saved him. And you are going to let some witches in your village. Somebody who can release curse on you. The Bible is saying, do not suffer a what? Ah, you, you are suffering them. You are allowing them. You say, oh, Father, just, just Father, protect. Nah. Some of you need to talk to Papa. Papa these guys have good. They, nah. In the name of Jesus, let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Ah, if somebody, <laughs> they are refusing to pay me. Lord, I don't want them to die. Let him just pursue them that they will give me what is mine. Do you remember when the lepers, <laughs> was it Samuel prophesied? And then the lepers went towards, they say, if we stay here, we die. It was Elisha. If we stay here, we die. If we go to the enemy, we, we, we may die also. Let's just go. When they were going, the, the Assyrians had like chariots coming. They had destroyers coming. And the destroyers were dispatched because Elisha spoke. Remember, Elisha was already walking with these guys. So in order for Elisha's word to be fulfilled, that every price of flour and everything will go down, they saw an opportunity. When these guys were going, they followed. That's why I'm saying this is delete worthy because some things I'm saying will not sound very Christian, but it's in your Bible. Because your version of Christianity is not from God. It's the version of what men think how God should be. Second Samuel chapter 24 from verse 14 to 16. Second Samuel 24 verse 16. 14, 14 through 16. Uh -huh. And David said unto, and unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aranua, the Jebusite. <laughs> the angel was in one location. The angels, God said, these people have they destroyed them. They, they destroyed, destroyed until God said, hey, my guy, too much. <laughs> Pull your hand back now, too much. One guy. I think I'm teaching you something to <laughs> Right, Musa, it's too much. <laughs> you see some you see sometimes when people you, you see it is very dangerous. To fight somebody that knows something you don't know. Ooh, one more time. That's really good. That is why I always say this. I always say this. I always say, Lord, or even I even tell you guys, I say, you know, they preach the Lord Jesus. They may misunderstand me, so I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, but if I wake up on the wrong side of the bed, <laughs> you may not like what will happen. Elisha, Elisha, they called him bald head. Do you think those bears just came from nowhere? Do you know who did that? Wow. 
obviously we are children of God. We have to have a tender heart. And we have to love people. We have to be compassionate. But don't have compassion for witches and wizards and demons and evil spirits. No. That's good. Amen. Amen. Do you realize on the last day, one angel will put Lucifer in chains. One. Not a whole ma army. Mm. One. It won't even be Michael. That's why it says, and Michael and his angels. He was just telling you who kicked Satan out. Mm. <laughs> Michael is too much for him. He's wow. a big, big boss. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. One guy will say, hey, you. He will say, yes, sir put in chains, and they will drag him to the one guy. The Bible goes as far as to say, men will stand and say, is this the man that deceived the whole world? You actually look at Satan and you'll be upset with yourself. <laughs> Maybe I should give you one more. Second Chronicles 32, 21. <coughs> Start from 20 to 21. Chronicles 32, verse mm. 20. And for this cause Hezekiah, the king, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel which cut off all all the mighty men of valor <laughs> and the leaders and captains in the camp of Assyria. The Lord sent the same guy who annihilated, who killed. <laughs> you know, when you guys think of angels, you're thinking of people with harps floating. <laughs> there are other guys that are just, show me. Show me who you want me to deal with, Lord. Ooh. They are a weapon. When you think of angels, you just think, Hallelujah. Do they worship God? Absolutely. But they are not what you think. I'm just trying to show you that God has ninjas that take people out. That's good. Job 15. From verse 19 to 21. Wow, we have over 6,000. Yeah, let's keep, can we keep those likes going up? Yeah. We have over 6,000 people watching. Amen. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification. Amen. Job 15. 19 through 21. Uh -huh. Unto whom alone the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. Mm -hmm. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. Mm -hmm. A dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon him. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. Keep going. <laughs> um, verse 22. He believeth, he believeth not that he shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for of the sword. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> Some people are walking around, they don't know the destroyer is already upon them. Wow. What? First Corinthians 10.10. 10. First Corinthians 10 and verse 10. Uh-huh. Neither murmur ye, and some of them also Please, murmur. Please, uh, uh, savor it. Actually, start from 8 to 10. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Neither let us commit fornication, mm -hmm. as some of them committed, mm -hmm. and fell in one day three and 20,000. Mm -hmm. Jeez, 23,000. Mm -hmm. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, mm -hmm. and were destroyed of serpents. Mm -hmm. Neither murmur ye, 
as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Oh. <laughs> if you complain too much, God will just send destroy. Let's just go to heaven now. If they destroy, <laughs> you, <won't laughs> you belong to Christ, but you will cut your life short. Why? Why? Why are you here? You just complain. Oh you don't goodness. pray for people. Oh you don't do it. You are just complaining, complaining. Why, why? Have you ever seen a complaining person live long? Oh, that's true. No. Now I'm asking you an honest question. No. 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 Complaining is demonic. Ooh. Because Jesus has solutions, you you are complaining. Oh. Ah, woe is me. Ah, me. It's like, don't tempt Christ like the others tempt him and serpents ate them. Beat them, sorry. And don't murmur like some people murmured and the destroyer destroyed them. Ah. <laughs> and this is in the New Testament, they are telling you this. So this, the destroyer can be unleashed by you even by God just because you are just knucklehead. You complain too much. You're just, uh, okay, let's just, um, let's just move on. God could do that. This is why a child of God should not be a complainer. You're inviting somebody. Psalm 17, from verse 3 to 4. Psalm 17, verse 3 through 4. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. When you talk about people, even men, you don't know who you're talking about. You may put yourself on the path of the destroyer. Me, myself, knowing this truth, I don't, I, I leave people to do, the, do you. I didn't, I didn't call you. I'll preach to my, the ones God has sent me to, I'll teach them what God has told me. I won't spend my time talking about this one is fake, this one is real. Maybe they used to walk with God and they messed up, truthfully. My duty is to teach the people the truth, not what you, that's your business. Those people also has a, have a responsibility to walk in truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Me talking ab about you, maybe you fixed it with God. Maybe you have this angelic presence, then the destroyer comes after me. No, I'm good. Because you can't bind him in the name of Jesus. He works for Jesus. <laughs> the destroyer is not a demon. He's an angel from heaven. So you can say, I rebuke you. You'll be like, ah. <laughs> rebuke who? <laughs> Do you know who I work <laughs> Proverbs 28, 24. And you'll understand why God says, honor your father and mother, and your days will be long. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs 28, 24. Proverbs 28 and 24. Uh-huh. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith, it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. <laughs> you are his home. He says, you are the kind we look for. Oh, wow. Uh, Oh my goodness. Huh? Oh my goodness. Yes. They are God's judgment. Their duty is to serve people what you did. I said that in the beginning. I think this is a delete video for sure. Right? It is 100% a delete video. Yeah? Yeah, it's a delete video.
Now, I want to show you something. Show us. Can you go to Ephesians where it says, take the full armor of God? Start from the helmet. Let's start from there. Is it Galatians or Ephesians? No, it's Ephesians. Ephesians, Ephesians yeah. Ephesians 6 yeah. from, uh, yeah, 11. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Not and only resist, withstand, meaning you can strike back. Uh huh. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Notice, having, having done all to stand, stand therefore, meaning you, it is your duty Ooh. to be able to stand against the devices of Ooh. Satan. God has provided the weapons, it's up to you. Ooh, Jesus. That's good. But anyone that is to hold a weapon, first you must also be equipped with the armor. So when they strike you, say, You, you can strike back. Okay, keep going. Watch this. Uh, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins geared about with truth mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh -huh. Why do you need truth? You don't need facts. You need truth. Ooh. You need to know God's mind. Ooh. How does this thing work? That's Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Uh -huh. Keep going. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked mm -hmm. and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh, you missed it. Read it, read it again. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praise the Lord who is angels. Psalms 103, right? Yeah. Verse 20. Notice that. Take the sword of the Spirit. Huh? When Jesus, our Lord, was speaking to Satan, when Satan said, if you are the Son of God, did Jesus produce a sword? No. The Bible says, after the angels came and ministered to him, and when he left the wilderness, he was strong. There's a difference between resisting and picking up the sword of the Spirit. If I pick up a sword, it's because I'm going to strike something. I'm about to use it. Yeah. So having the word of God and the understanding of the word of God becomes a sword in your hands because now you know how to navigate. Ooh. Because out of the whole armor, the only thing that is not an armor was the sword. Take on the full armor of God so that you may be able st to stand. And after all standing, put on this, put on this. And then after that, it tells you, yeah, pick up the sword of the spirit. Wait, what? That's n it's the only thing that is not an armor. It's the only thing you are wow. given there that is actually a weapon. Wow. Everything else is to keep you. <laughs> the sword is the only one that you can now strike back. I feel like I'm talking to myself. What? It's the only thing that is a weapon. He did not say take on the weapon. It starts by telling you our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Remember, they are weapons. And then he tells you, therefore, take the full armor of God. Because anyone that cannot resist the devil, anyone that is not equipped with faith, anyone that is not equipped with truth, you are not qualified to operate in this place. 
So a lot of believers cannot function in the angelic realm, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare, because you have so many holes in your own armor that if you enter into this realm and you cannot stand, they can actually turn against you because they will fight anyone that opposes God. So for you to enter into that place, you must be upright with... Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. So they tell you our weapons. And then he tells you, yeah, put on the armor. After that, after you have done all that, now take the sword of the spirit. What? Which is the word of God? Wait, what? <laughs> but you notice everyone that walked with the word of God, mightily that caused havoc. Whenever they said something, there is somebody that went to make sure that thing was taken care of. The Bible says this, it says, and out of the mouth of Jesus came what? Swords. His eyes were full of fire. But when he opened his mouth, what came out? Swords. Wow. <laughs> you still don't get it. I think many of you is still going over your head. It's still, you're still missing it. Uh, this is a hundred million percent delete. <laughs> it's gone. Uh, it's gone. This one is gone. <laughs> I think I'm saying too much. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. Okay, are you there? Now, yeah. now read, read Psalms 103.20. Psalms 103.20, mm -hmm. bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now, let me tell you what the word of God is. Amen. Let me explain to you something. The Bible says you are a written epistle, right? Every word that we have in scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Truth, right? Now please hear this and hear this by the Spirit of God. The word of God must always carry the desire of God. Meaning what God was to, wants to accomplish it must always produce the outcome that God desires. It must always be accompanied by the Spirit of God. Or must be met by the Spirit of God. When Elisha said, by tonight, oil will be this price, flour will be this price. Yes. And I think the general, the king doubted him. He said, by you, you will not even live to see it. Notice it came to pass, even though it came from the heart of the prophet. It came to pass because it was God's word, it carried God's intention. So God's word is not always Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Genesis this and that. It is a declaration that is born of the spirit of God. In your own spirit, when that word comes out, it is God speaking. Amen. This is why the Bible says it like this. Let him that speaketh speak as what? An oracle of God. Why? You must speak like somebody that is representing God. How do you speak? Because their duty is to hearken to the voice of his word. So there is somebody that has a voice. And within that voice, there's God's word. That's what they are pursuing. Where there is injustice, the flaming swords are there. 
because their duty that's why the bible says god is a god who loves justice meaning where there is anything that is not just they are present is this making sense so far So in finalizing this, God wants you to understand how to pray. Amen. If the psalmist is saying, Father, let the angel of the Lord chase them that are looking for my head. They set traps for me, eh? He didn't just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, vindicate me. Uh -uh, sometimes you need the angel of the Lord to step in. But this won't also work if you are a tempered person. Every second you are, you'll be mature, you'll not even qualify. This is like being given the nuclear codes. It's not something to play with. Are you sure you can hear me? <laughs> I want to finish, but I'm afraid. <laughs> you see, the, the issue is I am, I, always, I am always in a place whereby well, we have over 7,000 people, 7,400. Make sure, make sure you hit the, the thumbs up. Make sure you follow. Make sure you like. Make sure you turn on the notification. When I come on here to be honest with you before the Lord Jesus, I don't come on here because I, I am trying to gain anything. I really am not. I just want you guys to gain. So you see, when a man of God is sent by God, right? When you are sent by God, you want to make sure everything that God has given you, you have exhausted. You have given it out. Because what is the point of God giving me insight, giving me foresight, and then it ends with me? If God calls me tomorrow and I did not deliver unto you what I know, then I didn't really serve my purpose. Because we are not just here to bring you to the Lord Jesus. We are here to make sure that you are empowered. Not only salvation, but you are empowered in Christ Jesus. That the ones that you will train will be even more empowered than you because what you will know through prayer, through the pursuit of God, you will also increase spiritually. Yeah. That the ones that will come after you will be even more powerful yeah. than you. See, when Elijah left, Elisha had to beg him to get something. And Elisha was more powerful than every prophet. Imagine if the sons of the prophet were wise to pull from Elijah. How many Elijahs would have been replicated? It took hundreds of years for John the Baptist to come with the same thing that Elijah had. Children of God, we don't want to be like that. Look at our father Enoch. Just disappeared. What did he know that we don't know? What did Methuselah know that we don't know? Why did this guy li live so long? <laughs> what did he know that we didn't know? What did Moses not tell us? Why did he just share these mysteries with Aaron and then with Aaron and Miriam and then he gave Joshua everything? Joshua can stop the, the, the sun from setting. What did these guys know that we did not know? Why did God choose that dispensation for some things to be closed out? And then this dispensation of grace for us to have the fullness of the kingdom. But we are not walking in it because some of the men of God that God actually gave these things, men like William Branham, men, women like Catherine Kuhlman or Maria Woodward Etta or, or, or John G. Lake that walked with devastating power manifestation of God never passed it on no one after them continued what these guys could do why <coughs> the 
because they lived among people whom when they spoke, they had no ears to hear. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. When you read the Bible, the Bible doesn't give you understanding. It gives you information, knowledge. Understanding is up to you or who is with you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. It does not say the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Yeah. Daniel was with God. There are things he needed understanding, even though God spoke to him. He fasted, God spoke to him, and he did not have understanding. An angel left heaven to come and give him understanding. So hearing from God doesn't mean you get understanding. That's where we have people who are confused, thinking God's name is, I don't know what. They, you know, they have all this now. Oh, now the Hebrew, you know, it's not even real Hebrew. His name is, I don't know what, and, the, and his son is. It's just like, yo, God is spirit. Who told you God is a Jew? Who told you that that's even his name? Does it not say, every tongue will confess? Do you know what the word tongue there means? Every language. So you're obsessed in a dialect instead of being obsessed with the spirit of God that gave or revealed a certain name to a certain people. Or we don't even call the real name. Do you think God is listening to your, your vocal cords, your sound? Or is listening to your spirit? Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Is God listening to my spirit or God listening to my language? So it just shows you how foolish we have become. Yet we are living in the age of information. But we have more compromised people than we have ever seen in any time. <laughs> Sad. I want you to grab what you want to give to God quickly. And then um, when we come back, I'll give you some instructions. And then uh, tomorrow, I'm going to prepare you for something we're going to do tomorrow. We'll have just a time of prayer. Amen. Tomorrow. But before that, grab what you want to give to God. Grab what you want to give to God. Grab your best. Please, when you want to give, go to the website. Don't, don't use uh, whatever you've saved or search on your phone because there are so many false accounts, fake Venmos, fake uh, cash apps, all too many fake things. Um, go to the website. Go to prophetlovi.com and look at all the giving means and confirm the name before you do anything. And then when you come back, we will pray and God will help us from there. Amen. Amen. Let us worship and bow down. For he is our God, he is our God. Let us make a joyful sound unto our God, unto our God. Let us worship and bow down. For he is our God, he is our God. Let us make a joyful sound. Unto our God, unto our God, let us sing our highest praise, for He is our God, He is our God, hallelujah all our days, unto our God, unto our God, let us sing our highest praise. He is our God, He is our God, hallelujah, all our unto our God, unto our God, He's been good to us, good to us, so good, He's been good.
could never get enough. I just fall more than enough every day. Tell me all your mysteries My quiet heart is listening Carry me away with you Ooh. I just fear a star I just wanna get closer to you now. I just wanna get closer to you now. With you in and I'll never breathe you out. I just wanna get closer to you. To your secret place I want to know you face to face Yeah, the way the angels do Oh, that Moses on the mountain top Elijah when he's taken up I want to bow down to you I just want to get closer to I just want to get closer to you now With you in and I'll never breathe you out I just want to get closer to you now But you're full of compassion You're the giver of a life everlasting You're the savior of the world, Messiah All I need I find in you, provider Worthy, wonderful, awesome power Sure. 
To seek your holy face, I lift my voice to honor Surround me with your grace, it's amazing Forgiving the way that I've been And you're changing the whole me, whole me I didn't know who I could be Till you show me Worthy, wonderful, awesome, powerful Glory, glory to you My heart sings perfect sovereign
Use your tears to fight your fears to time after time. He has spoken to the lost and the broken. Ocean to ocean, he is alive. In the prophets today, for the sinners and saints, he answers his children by fire. fire. All the prayers that you pray, not a one goes to waste. And we are back. Um, I'm enjoying these cookies. They're deep. Mm. Um, nothing like warm cookies. Huh? Freshly baked. Hey. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, tomorrow is going to be our day of prayer. Amen. And... Um, We are going to truly um, have like an intense time of prayer. I'll, I'll tell you the time so that you can prepare yourself. And tomorrow we are going to deal with certain things that have been out of the reach of your prayer because you did not know about what you learned today. Amen. So... So that when we pray, when you're at home, you pray. 
you know how to interact with everything that God has made available. Amen. Let's please, let's not be those people that don't know what God has made available. It's actually sad. You know what I mean? It's, it's sad. Why? Why should we not know what God has made available? We need to know. You, you know what I'm saying? We need to know. So, um, I am going to let the video stay up for maybe another two hours or three hours for people to just rewatch and then it got to go. The reason being is not because I don't want to. It's just that I am so extremely misunderstood. <laughs> because some of the things I say, they're not like common knowledge, which is not saying that it's bad or, or it's not that. The problem is God wants to raise people, but the problem is people want milk. They don't want meat. If you want meat, we don't just do meat. We don't do boneless meat. Your teeth may have a hard time, but it is the most enjoyable. Sorry if you're vegan or vegetarian. It's just a figure of speech. <laughs> but let us be effective, okay? Let us be effective. Uh, with our prayer. Let us be effective. Uh, with our prayer. Let us understand that a lot of the things you're told. Don't do. Do it. Don't do it. Don't. Or it's which. Most of it. I'm telling you. Is there real witchcraft stuff out there? Yes. But. Many of the things you are told that are even biblical that you shouldn't do it is because the people who are dealing were afraid. They didn't know what they were doing. They have the mind, demonic mindset that they were programmed with. They don't know the mind of God. Listen, a child of God has somebody worse than the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper is a joke. <laughs> Spirit of death is nobody to flaming sword. What? So we fear demonic spirits because we don't know who God has placed or made available for us. When we come tomorrow, we're going to pray. So tonight, I want you to watch this again. Get your notes down. Share it with as many people because in a little bit, we'll just be unavailable. Um... Mm, this one doesn't only have the spirit of delete, it has the anointing of delete all over it. <laughs> it's anointed to be deleted. <laughs> so, oh, I want to also say this. Um, the tickets for Houston are sold out, but, 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 but. There's a few, like maybe 50 or 100 tickets floating still online. I saw some website upsold some tickets they bought from Ticketmaster and upsold them there's probably maybe a hundred if even so I they have upsold them but I'll tell you this Jesus is worth it Amen. go get it you do not want to miss what God will do in Houston I am telling you you don't want to miss it uh, I love you um, Jesus our Lord loves you even more I don't want you to be people, how do you do this, how do you do this? I want you to be people who are so prayerful that you understand that God responds to those who are righteous, those who walk with him, because the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Um, watch this again, let it empower you, and then um, tomorrow, maybe tonight I'll post something to tell you what time tomorrow so that you can be prepared. If you need to take a nap or whatever to be ready, you can be ready and then uh, we'll make it happen. So I love you guys. May the Lord Jesus keep you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Yeah.